of the things I I want to talk about is very very important to just move your body. But it's not just moving the body. It's not going to the gym per se. It's using the body in all the directions and all the forms it's made for. Yeah, we can do all kinds of movements. Yeah, in all different planes and all different directions. Yeah, and it's not. It's not because it's. It's just like that. You know, we need to use it. Otherwise, you lose it. Yeah, that's what we talk about this morning. If you're gonna look at uh, our brain, every active moving animal on the plane on the on the planet has a brain. Yeah. So that tells us in just rough, it tells us that that brain primary function is um, provide movement. Yeah, we need that central nervous system to provide movement. Yeah, to, to have the, the body moving. Yeah. So the more complex the movement, the more that nervous system is working. And that's also where proprioceptors kicks in. And the proprioceptors, for my part, kicks in with that flow. Yeah, we talked about the flow, that it is something you just have under control, but you're not really aware of it. So the proprioceptors, is basically the feeling of your body. It's a, it's a, um, how do you call that? Constantly feedback of your body, yeah, Just between your body and your mind. So that's why we can walk without thinking about it. Okay? And that's why, for me, for my part, is flow kicking in. We can walk to the bush without paying attention to walking per se. Just the surroundings, but still walking quietly. <coughs> now, so if you're gonna, I will talk. I, I, talk, I talk to you guys about um, the brain and uh, the body and mind, and um, every active organism on the planet that has a brain can move, yes? So, it tells us a, a little bit about that movement is healthy, yeah? There's no doubt about it. There's a lot of research done, movement is healthy, yeah? I told you guys about that astronaut is going out now to space and loses density, yeah? There's a lot of research about uh, milk and calcium that tells us that we're not, we're not Really, you we don't really need milk yeah, to get strong bones because in Indonesia they don't drink milk, yeah. and what they do there they, they just move a lot. Yeah. So it tells us something, it tells us something that movement is necessary for, for health. Yeah. Um, <coughs> kids. Kids and young animals start off with playing, and that is a vital part of growing up. Yeah, because it allows or it gives the body the um, how do you say that right? Exploration. It's exploration of the body. It's practicing. Yeah, it's getting used to. It's playing. It's 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 biting. It's crawling. It's everything. Yeah. So for my part, it's like it's very, very useful to look at kids, how they move, and just pick some things of that, and just what I want to say, just keep playing. Even if you're an adult, just keep playing. Playing is a very vital part of being healthy. Yeah. And it also incorporates the whole thing of uh, being creative. Now, if we're gonna talk about movement. We kind of put that into the wilderness perspective. Yeah, we Rich was talking about uh, the, the beach muscles and all those kind of thing. Yeah, we're not talking about that, but we're talking about actual movement that you need to be able to move as efficient as possible through the bush. Yeah, in wilderness environment or just on the farm. So what I want to do if I talk about movement, 
and if we go and move, I want to incorporate movements that are useful for us. Okay. Now, <coughs> the net move, what Rich was talking about this morning, has a, a setup. They talk about locomotion. A locomotion for them is everything that's, uh, every movement that um, has to do with moving. So it can be crawling, can be rolling, can be walking, can be running, can be climbing. Everything that has to be with moving the body to space. Jumping. Manipulated, if I say that right. Yeah. That's all about pulling things. So basically you manipulate something external load in your own body. So it can be dragging things, can be throwing things, can be pulling things off the ground. Yeah. And the other thing is combative, they, they put that in combative, but basically um, <coughs> just uh, grab each other and get what, what kids do, right? Just playing with each other, all those kind of things. One of the good things to understand that all those movements have one thing in common, or just needs a few things, and that are proprioceptors, we've talked before, balance, Balance and proprioception is not per se the same thing because you can move your arm and still have feedback without being um, using balance. Yeah? So balance for me is just balancing the body to space. Yeah? But I still can have, uh, without balance I still can have proprioception. Proprioception is basically just the feedback from your limbs, your muscles, your bones, everything that comes back to the nervous system. Tension and relaxation. These are very important. I just talked about why a sprinter needs tension. Yeah? Because it allows him to utilize this, the, the power and the forces that are he putting into the ground, come back in the muscle, and releases them again to sprint forward. Yeah. So if we understand that, then we kind of look at different things, like pulling things off the ground. If you're pulling something off the ground that's very, very heavy, what do you need? Relaxation or tension? Tension. 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 Yeah. So the, you can say that the heavier the task, the more intense the task, the more tension you need. Yeah. <clears throat> now, if we're going to look at combative, so I'm gonna throw a punch or something. Yeah, I need tension on the right moment. So if I hit it, I need the tension. Here, when I give that punch, this part I create tension. I store tension in this part of the of the body. Basically, where I want to go to is this whole part of the body that is basically made as a sprint. Yeah. We tend to do a lot of crunches, sit-ups, and all kinds of flexing movements. Yeah. You always see them, yeah, we've got a six pack or eight pack. Yeah, we do a lot of crunches. Yeah. That's where it goes wrong. Because the latest research shows us that that spine is not created to my flexion and the tension. It's create to make flexion, to make us more movable, and to create balance on the load. But it's not per se made for making flexion or extension on the heavy load. Yeah. It creates damage. And especially if you do this. I have tension yeah. and a turn. So we have two things that work together against that spine. Flexion and turning, yeah, and it's just devastating. So keep in mind that tension, relaxation, yeah, of the body and of the whole spine is vitally important for the health of the spine. So what we want to do if we want to train this whole part, we have to 
incorporate the whole biomechanics of the spine. Right? So the spine is made for tension, creating uh, a stiff platform, because the stiffer that is, the more power we can create in pushing ourselves forward, or can pushing something away, or hitting something. Yeah. This is storing the energy, the core, we call about we call that the core, mm -hmm. to extremity. So we basically create the energy here, in this part, not only the beach muscles here, no, the whole, the whole part around. Yeah. It's not just that singular muscle here, it's the whole core. Yeah. It creates the, the, basically the energy, stores the energy, and then it goes to the extremities. So we have tension here, relaxation in this part, and tension there. So at the moment of impact, we have tension. Make the, make sense? So we know a few things. Yeah, we need a proprioceptus to move um, in a flow and to move appropriately. Yeah, because we need the feedback. The other thing we need is balance, especially with walking, stalking, running jumping, climbing on things, we need that balance. Yeah, it's vitally important to keep ourselves grounded, to keep ourselves orientated in space. Yeah. When, a, when a gymnast learns to uh, make, a, make a roll, how do you call it? Somersault. Somersault. One of the things that goes wrong very, very often is he loses his whole dimension of where, where he is in space. And it's also to do with orientation and balance. Tension and relaxation, you understand that? Yeah. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna put them into a movement prep. The movement prep for me is like a warm-up. You can do that every morning. It takes five minutes. And for me, every Every five minutes I do it, it's different. The same thing is coming through, but like the follow-up is every time it's different. Yeah. The only thing I'm uh, make sure of, all the basic <coughs> movements we use in daily life, or we need to use in daily life, are incorporated in that. So I warm up the body, and I start up, if I call it right, is a respire. Is like breathing. Yeah, because there's another thing with breathing. A lot of people tend to breathe very high. Yeah, up in the up in the chest area. <coughs> Important thing is to realize that if you breathe really high up in the chest area, you create a lot of tension here. That's where the tension is coming back in and relaxation. Because if you you create a lot of tension here, a lot of people have problems in this area here. And we want to relax that during the day. We want to support it, but we want to relax it. So what you want to do is you want to try to keep that breathing to the belly. That's all normal breathing. Why that do goes wrong, I don't know. Uh, I think a lot of people that are in that health sector don't know. But it's just a, the cause of things that go wrong over time that people tend to have that breathing up in the Yes. So the first thing we start is, uh, is, is breathing, and the second thing, thing is center, center the body. Because if a, if a joint is not moving through the middle, that is mo the one most likely to go wrong. Yeah. Now there is one thing we can do to center that, that joint, is by a movement prep, and the movement prep has, has to incorporate a thing called going to the edge of movement because there are the appropriate sepsis for the body to know this is the outer limit it's like we get in a lane yeah and we're having a car you get feedback from your eyes 
that you're driving in the middle of the lane. Yeah? But the body doesn't have that. It doesn't have that vision. So we need to tell him, all right, you're in the middle, and this is the outer edge of that lane. So what we're doing in the morning, with the movement prep, we push that car to, to the other edge, hit it, going back to the other edge, hit it, and then he knows, oh, that's the middle. Yeah. That's a very simple thing just to understand. Yeah. Why do we do it? If you don't do it, and you're going to start up running, and that joint is not working in the middle, but it's working here, it creates... Uh, load on different parts of the joint is not good, you get damage yeah, over time. So center and integrate, integrate will say we have done the, uh, the, 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 um, the flexing and the stretching yeah? now we can, we're going to put in that tension. So we have relaxation and then come tension comes in. We only can have tension if the body knows that that's the middle.